Linda, Graphite, 2023. Is this the year people finally understand we have a shortage? I love that question. I, I think so. I think we're seeing a lot more attention uh, coming to graphite because we're not just talking about the cathode anymore. We're talking about how is all of that heat absorbed and what do we need to make that work? Well, it's natural flake graphite. Synthetic can help at the margin when you're blending it, but natural flake graphite produced from a North American source is where it's at. And like I say, uh, there's an eight times multiple in terms of shortage for natural flake graphite that's needed from here to 2040. So I think we're well positioned as the shortage is starting this year in 2023, Tracy. Uh, Jack Lifton and I are going to be hosting an event in Detroit with the automotive industry because we don't think they get what a shortage there actually is. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but what are your thoughts on this? Do you agree with us or do you think they do understand and they're just trying to keep it hush hush? I think they do understand um, what is, I think the, the, the challenge is where are they going to find the right sources? And it's not just about the quality of the natural flake graphite, but there's geopolitical considerations. Do they want to rely on a less resilient supply chain through Africa and China, or do they want to invest in as equity investors to build our resource pipeline to reserve here in Canada, where we have abundance of natural flake graphite that we can move and shift into the anode. So I think this is the year where we're gonna be seeing uh, more in-depth conversations from automakers towards juniors like ourselves, from really, you know, what were introductory conversations last year. We had a geologist on the phone earlier this week that said if he could, if he can't drive his pickup truck there, he's not interested. Your location is remarkable. And you just joined the team about a year and a half ago, brought on other senior players. Can you tell us what, can you give us kind of an overview of what you're attempting to build here in the critical mineral sector? Yeah, we're, we're a vehicle ourselves. We're using Lamico to build a company, a business for this new sector. So I think what's most important for investors to know is we ourselves are investors and we sit down and said, what is this company going to look like five years from now? It's going to be a 10x of where Lamico is today. That's our vision. That's what we are building towards. So when we look at share price on the margin, that reflects some uncertainty in the markets, right? There's risk. The Canadians, we're in a, in a short technical recession, as it were, right now. But the big prize is to know that you have access, as you say, to a fantastic deposit in the middle of the Grenville graphite belt. And the way to develop that is as a responsible operator that works with the community, responds to concerns about what it means to have a critical minerals project in an area that has never had mining before. They've had industry quarrying. So we need to work within that context and build that social acceptability at the same time as we build the technical resource. And I think it's um, a fantastic opportunity because investors with Lamico are seeing a team that has worked for producing companies. So we know how to take a project all the way through the stages of development. I talk to companies all day long and I notice you do something none of them do, which, which I just love. You actually have a mission statement. You use, you're building a new energy company. You constantly reinforce that you have this vision for a new energy company. You talk about carbon neutrality. You talk about sustainability. And you also seem to prioritize community relations. I noticed you had a land acknowledgement news release recently. Can you talk to us about what that was about? Some of the highlights, please. Tracy, the land acknowledgement is, is a, a small part of a much larger philosophy around, um, I think it's, and I'll speak as a Canadian, is really being part of the learning process as to what it means um, for First Nations to have self-determination, to uh, look at land from the perspective of traditional landowners, rather than from the mindset of, we have mineral rights and this is what we're going to do here. And so I have enjoyed this long journey of learning through two people who have been working with us, two women, uh, one who is from Kitigan Zippy territory and another woman who I've known for many years who is Mohawk. 
the land acknowledgement was really a summary of our efforts in the last year to learn and to become engaged in the truth and reconciliation process. And to finally say, the Canadian critical mineral strategy says corporate Canada needs to start looking at uh, call to action 92. And we wanted to put it down saying we're committed to this. And it's not a position as much as it is a philosophy of how we're going to work. And uh, the call to action 92 is basically to say that we want to have um, meaningful jobs as part of the process. We want to have meaningful consultation that includes um, uh, a process that is led by First Nations. And it is also about um, education among our team and our board and other Canadians as to the history of our government and, and the way Canada was formed and First Nations. That's what Call to Action 92 is in, in a nutshell. Well, speaking, uh, speaking about Call to Action, uh, we would love it if you would participate in a panel during PDAC with us, uh, Belinda, not only about graphite, but one on setting up the financial infrastructures needed to actually build these supply chain chains in North America. That sounds fantastic. And I, I, I do have uh, some views on that. So happy to share. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us today. And for everyone interested in Lamico Metals, please go to their website. Thank you.